and the key the key concept which you which we need to learn with you which is called the characteristic characteristic polynomial and I should add characteristic polynomial of a matrix and that's the key thing which helps you to identify the eigenvalues when you don't have candidates for the eigenvectors. So when you, when you don't have these favorable conditions and this last as in this last example I just discussed with you. So again, we start with the same setting. We have an n times n matrix. We have eigenvalue, lambda. We have the associated eigenvector. That's my setting. Here's my setting, oh, and here's my final notation, which is attached to this. That's my eigen subspace. So listen to my analysis now. Imagine, well, because x is the eigenvector, it's non-zero on one hand. On the other hand, it comes from the eigen subspace, E lambda. That's, that's just a part of the definition we discussed in my previous slide. This one is the same as to claim something like this because that's it. It means that x is in, in the null space of the matrix like so. And now I'd like, to I'd like to look at this identity with more details. From the point of view of system of linear equations, from the point of view of system of linear equations, what I look at here is the n equations with n unknowns, right? The elements of this vectors are unknowns and the coefficients of my system, they come from my matrix on in, in this big matrix in the brackets. So this is a system of linear equations. And the important thing is that my assumption that x is the eigenvector, meaning that x makes work this system of linear equations, and meaning that x is a non-zero, it means that the system of linear equations possesses non-zero solution. Homogeneous system of linear equations, the one which has zeros on the right-hand side, always has a trivial solution. It's, it's, we, we all know that. But non-trivial solution, it's, it's something. It signifies something, having a non-trivial solution. What does it signify? It signifies this. So this one has a non-trivial solution, non-zero solution. What does it signify? It signifies this. If I take the matrix, if I take the augmented matrix of the system of linear equations, which is very just the matrix A take lambda i n itself, because the right-hand side is simply zero vector. And if you, by any means, take this to the row echelon form, what does this, what does signify, what, what this, uh, the existence of a non-zero solution, what does it signify in terms of this uh, row echelon form? It signifies that this row echelon form has non-leading columns. That's the criterion for the system to have many solutions, to have non-trivial solution in case of homogeneous system. However, I'm not going to, I mean, in, in, the spectral, uh, in the spectral analysis, when you discuss eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it is more convenient actually to uh, discuss things not in terms of row echelon forms and leading and non-leading columns, but in terms of determinants. And what we know is that even when the matrix has a non-leading columns, it means that the determinant of such a matrix, given that it is a square matrix, is zero. So my conclusion now is that the equivalent, the equivalent of these two statements, having a non-zero vector in the eigen subspace, is this determinant of this matrix, uh, A take lambda I n, is zero. And that's the main tool, main test, which will enable your findings of eigenvalues for the matrix. So what, we, what you're going to do, first let me just frame it as a theorem. Yellow book frames it, frames it as a theorem. I do the same. What I claim is this. If you have scalar lambda, which is the eigenvalue of matrix A, this will be true if and only if when this determinant is zero. This theorem, which now is like said in one single line, and that's the argument behind this theorem. You see the machinery, basically this analysis of row echelon forms and determinants, something we built for quite some time actually in the first semester and in the second semester. And now all of this combined just gave me this little nice, very neat criterion for testing eigenvalues of a matrix. All I have to do, I have to compute this piece on the left-hand side and find those values lambda, which vanish it. 
When we start computing this piece, you will, we will realize that this piece is nothing else but a polynomial. And that's the polynomial which we're going to call the characteristic polynomial. We have a special symbol for that. This determinant of the A take lambda I n matrix. Yeah, normally, it is denoted by this symbol, P sub A. Here's a reflection that this depends on the matrix A. And here's a reflection that basically we look at this as a function of lambda. You plug different lambdas. You come up with the different values, right? You alter this coefficient lambda. Determine it will return you different values. So P A is a, is a mapping of F into F. As a matter of fact, like I said, first time we compute it and many other times you compute it, you will, you will learn that in fact it's a polynomial and it's a polynomial of degree n with coefficients from f, remember this symbol? And what we know now is this, that eigenvalues, they always within the set of solutions to this polynomial. As a consequence, we now can conclude this, because the polynomial Pa is a polynomial of degree n, we all know that such polynomial has always n solutions. That's a fundamental theorem of algebra. It's the first semester stuff. Oh, no, no, wait a second. It's something we discussed in the first chapter today with you, together with you, this semester. It's a fundamental theorem of algebra. And that tells me that every matrix, every square matrix of size n will always have n eigenvalues. And if you remember, when I discussed with you diagonal matrices on the slide before, I said, uh, if you have a diagonal matrix of size n, every eigenvalue basically comes from the diagonal entry. Now this prefix every is fully justified because this slide tells me that I cannot possibly have more than n eigenvalues because all of them are solutions to the polynomial, characteristic polynomial of degree n. So if I have eigenvalues, altogether I will have at most n of them. And for the diagonal matrix, we identified all of them from my previous slide. All n is just diagonal entries of this of the metric. Any questions?